This is Mid-Atlantic Women in Agriculture's Wednesday webinar, Creating Effective Videos Using iMovie via iOS Device. Our presenter today is Michelle Walfred, Communication Specialist, University of Delaware. A special thank you to our sponsors, Farm Credit, Delaware Department of Agriculture, and USDA. All archived presentations, along with all upcoming presentations, can be found at our website. Thank you for listening. Well, hello everybody. My name is Michelle Walford. I'm with the University of Delaware, and uh, I've been uh, doing these, I think I'm starting my fourth year. I can't believe it. Um, I'm not a, uh, originally, uh, I'm in communications with the College of Agriculture at the University of Delaware, and my colleague, Christy Mannering, and I um, contribute to this wonderful Wednesday webinar session uh, which is, and the people that you see on here, the sponsors and the partnerships are all responsible for keeping this going, for keeping our terrific conference going on. So if you see any of these people, shout them out and say thank you. It's, it's why we're here. Uh, Christy and I tend to do more tech and social media topics. And one of the ones that people have come up to me personally, uh, as well as on here, is I really would like to know how to to, to work with, with videos. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to concentrate, as it was advertised, uh, on iOS. And uh, we've got somebody that needs to be muted, but that's, we'll just keep going. Um, so effective iOS video. And that's both, only because that's what I have, so that's what I know how to teach. Uh, so what we're going to do is focus mostly on iOS devices, but having said that, if you have an Android, uh, these apps work very, very similar. So what you'll be learning today as far as setting up your video ahead of time and making it work, the time, all of that's going to be relative to you, and there's going to be very little difference. There's some nuances, but very little difference between the, the apps, um, and we'll go over those as well. So we're going to look at uh, the how to prepare, how to, the fundamentals of a good recording, how long they should be, where you'll, where you'll put them, a little bit about copyright. And then what I plan to do is we need, we need to mute um, some live examples. I actually want to go onto my iPad, which is identical to an iPhone as far as the app is concerned, and, and we, I have a fake project that I'm, that I'm going to create. So um, there are plenty of apps available. We are going to be looking at iMovie, which is the native, it comes free if you have a new iPhone, a relatively new iPad, you're going to get that for free. If you have an older one, you're going to pay, I think it's $4.99, so very inexpensive. And let me just see here, I'm going to have to go into participants. Somebody's not muted. Okay, well. I don't know who it is. Okay. But, uh, oops, let me go back. Um, so the, there are some other apps that you can try. Filmora Go, Pinnacle Studio Pro. If you are, oh, and I'm having an issue here with uh, the participants. Let me see if I can get that off. Okay. Uh, Android, the, the number one uh, rated is Adobe Premiere Clip, which is free, and also Power Director which is available both on Apple and, and just looking at this screenshot, what we're looking at here is PowerDirector. This is almost identical to iMovie. You have a place to look at your sources of video, film, sounds on your, on your camera or on your device, a place to preview, and you have your editing pane down at the bottom. So we're going to go over that. All right, and let's see here. So there is a difference with iMovie and the desktop. Uh, if you have a Mac, uh, you, you might be familiar with iMovie. Uh, there's also iMovie on steroids, which is called Final Cut Pro. Uh, that is a full service film editing. It's very, very user friendly, and it does have more built in soundtracks that you can use. You can rotate movies. You can change the color a little bit. So there's a little more bells and whistles with the desktop. Having said that, even though the app, the iMovie app is limited, 
um, it still does a terrific job. In most cases, it's all anybody ever needs. And the, the main thing is people do have smartphones. They may not have a $2,000 Mac, but they do have an iPhone or an iPad. So you, you have to use what you have. All right. So some vocabulary real quick. We're going to talk about cutaways. This, these are very important in creating a good video. B-roll. And I'll let you read this all later. And then there's insets, which is like a picture in picture. Not used to, I don't personally use insets too much, but some people like to have that. And then a transition. And if you've ever worked with PowerPoint or Keynote, um, you can have a blur or a checkerboard or a dissolve in between your slides. And it works identically with um, iMovie in the same way. So you need to ask yourself, what kind of video do you want? Um, determine the length of your video and who you want to send that out to. Uh, the target audience is very, very important. Um, otherwise, you're just kind of talking to, into the void. Will anybody be videotaped? There's lots of ways you can combine um, sources to make it a good movie. You can interview people. You can use still photographs. You can use um, some video footage. You can combine all three of them. You can add music. You could have no sound at all. You could have a voiceover. You could add music. Uh, do you want it to be funny? Uh, humor does have a place. Uh, there's some very effective um, extension videos that, for, that use humor. So that's something you want to think about ahead of time if you, if you can. The number one thing that you get out of this session today is please film horizontal. Look at the shape of your computer. Look at the shape of your TV set that you have at home. If you've looked at YouTube, if you go to a movie theater, you don't see portrait screens. You see horizontal screens. Everybody wants to shoot portrait. It's, it's more native, I think. It's a better, little bit of a better grip. But it wreaks havoc when you're trying to edit. Video editors, or if you are filming a scene, an eyewitness to, to something, and you send it to your, to your local news broadcast, they cringe when they see the verticals, because then they have to do all the special editing, you have these black squares on the side. So really try and shoot a vertical. You're going to get a much better picture. A lot of my uh, video taping are spontaneous, but you may want to consider um, planning ahead and writing a script that you can follow or someone who you are interviewing might follow and make sure that's in large font. Um, I like to, um, I shake a little bit. I don't have a medical reason for doing that. I just can't really hold it still. So I use a monopod. That's my preferred method. A monopod is a collapsible stick, similar to a selfie stick, but you can also use it for a DSLR camera. Um, pay attention to your background. You may remember the Sarah Palin interview years ago where she was being interviewed at a turkey farm, and they were grinding a turkey in the background. Um, and think of your background as ways to brand yourself. Is your, is your farm look nice, or does, are there signs or personal things on the, in the background that people will say. So you want to pay a little attention to that. If you are interviewing someone, um, I, I often will ask them a question and then they will answer me. So if I say, Tracy, how long have you been in uh, cooperative extension? And her answer is 15 years. Well, I plan on editing my questions out. Then, then her response has no context. So when you are interviewing someone and you plan to take yourself out of the equation, it's important that the person you're interviewing works that question in so that there's context. Also, ask them to pause in between their statements or their paragraphs. People get nervous the minute you put a camera in front of them, and they will mess up. They may get 80% 80, 80 of the way through, and then they mess up but you don't have to ruin what you filmed because there's been natural pauses. You can, you can edit where there's been a mistake, cut that out, and start over from that point. Um, always, and this is a very important part, always ask the subject to have a passive face as you wind up your, your interview if you're filming someone. Uh, people tend to, again, they get nervous. 
they will roll their eyes, they will grimace, they will make a funny face, they will immediately, immediately say, is that okay? And as an editor, you've got to cut that out, and it creates a very harsh, hard stop to your editing. So if you notice newscasters, they will look down at their uh, counter and they'll shuffle some papers, or they just ask them to look passively into the camera, give them like a three-second countdown, and then they can <sighs> we're finished. Good, I'm glad I got that over with. But people do this, and it really does create problems. So you do want to ask them to try and just stay relaxed, look into the camera, smile, and uh, then they can, then you can move on. Using rule of thirds, if you know anything about photography, um, rule of third works. This is a little pixelated. Sorry, I grabbed it off, off the internet. But when, when you're filming someone, um, it's nice to tell them how you're going to block the shot. You can go wide, medium, or tight. Um, 60 minutes or 10 burns will often even go tighter than this tight shot. They call it a very, a very tight close-up. I know that if I'm being filmed, I'd want to know, so I could either dress accordingly, put on an extra layer of makeup, do something like that. People, some people are self-conscious about their bodies, would prefer it to be waist up. So talk to the people uh, that, that you're filming and make sure that you're all on the same page about how you're going to frame the shot. The rule of thirds works best. If you'll notice, this man here is not dead center in any of the shots. He's a little off to the, in this case, to the right. Some equipment, these are, these are actually pieces of equipment that I have. This here is, let me see if I can get uh, a mouse here. This is, oops, I want to go back. Sorry about that. This is a monopod, the Dulcia here that you see. I hope you can see my cursor. Um, this is the monopod I use. It's about $15. I bought next to it is a little ball joint, so if I want to tilt my camera a little bit, roll it around, or go from vertical to horizontal, I can do so. I, buy, I bought a $5 spring-loaded grip for my phone. So in comparison here, I've got about maybe $30, $35 tied up in equipment. But this is what I prefer over a selfie stick, again, because I can take my phone off and I can screw on um, my DSLR, my Nikon, and take film with that. But you can buy a stabilizer. This is a stabilizer. It's good for walking around. These are expensive, about $300. I would recommend you get a three-axle stabilizer. I bought a two-axle because I didn't want, to, didn't want to spend the money, and I regret it. So this is really good if you're doing a lot of live streaming and you're going to save the footage later and use it. Or if you are filming and you're walking around, a stabilizer is really helpful. But mounting, um, you can buy spring loads for your, for your tablets as well. There's all different kinds. This one here uh, towards the bottom in the middle has a ball joint built in so you can adjust the orientation of your smartphone very, very easily. But a uh, um, very important to get high quality. The other thing you want to do, if you work for an organization, a nonprofit like the University of Delaware Extension, or maybe you have a business, maybe an organization, you have a creamery, you have a winery, you have a roadside produce stand, you constantly want to inf uh, reinforce your brand. So one of the things you want to do is create what are called bumpers. Some, some people call them wraps. And these will appear at the beginning of your video and at the end of the video. You can also have a blank one that you can use for titles. But this, this is a way to introduce, once you've created these, you can keep them. Um, I created uh, the, uh, the Mid-Atlantic ones that you see here in PowerPoint. They typically appear for four seconds at the beginning and four seconds at the end. If it's contact information, I'll tend to make that a little bit longer so people have time to jot it down. But be consistent with your style. But this is something people don't do. They just put up a video. Absolutely, you want to be able to, to reinforce your brand to let people know this was your business, this is your organization. Uh, so in the case of the Women in Ag, I took the title slide that I use today, and I'm going to have a fictitious assignment that I'm going to show you in a few minutes, but I took the Mid-Atlantic Women in Ag, this is in PowerPoint, and I simply changed the font, and I did a screenshot, 
and then I saved it to my camera roll, and that becomes my video bumper. I want to show you this real short video. I'm not going to play all of it. This is an intern that worked with me, and you'll see how the bumper works. And I want you, I'll, I'll play about halfway through this, but I want you to see this was an assignment that my intern worked on a couple years ago, and she actually created a how to, how to make a video. So I'll let you look at that a little bit. Notice there's a little bit of intro music. Hi, I'm Jackie Arpey, 2015 Extension Scholar. And in this video, I'll describe different ways and techniques that together we can make a video for your topic or program area. A video can be as short as 45 seconds or as long as 3 minutes. Research tells us that the sweet spot is 1 to 2 minutes. Longer videos can be broken up as chapters and connect automatically. Disclaimer, we're breaking the rules with this video. As I narrate, you will see that I am no longer on camera. As my audio track continues, I've dropped in still photographs known as cutaways, which provide important details to the viewer, such as a close-up of an insect, tree limb, or a wide landscape. We can do many different things with these cutaways. We can pan the photograph, zoom in or out, or present the photo without any effects at all. When they appear, how long, and when they exit are all up to you. Please consider what photos or video close-ups you would like to use for emphasis. You can supply them or I'd be happy to take them for you. Horizontal photos work best. Vertical can work but must be panned to see the full photograph. Another ingredient of a successful video is to insert footage into the background, as you see here. This is known as B-roll and any sound that was recorded with the footage is rarely used. B-roll is good to show action, a broader view of crowds of people, students working, etc. Normally we use about 10 seconds of video per insertion and we can insert many back to back. Video from your smartphone can be very useful B-roll. However, please keep the video orientation horizontal. As you see here, Portrait or vertical video just doesn't look right. Audiences love numbered list. When planning your script, think about how you might want to use this technique. The seven Delaware noxious weeds. What are the six best healthy foods? Here's eight ways to save money. Treat your landscape to these four must-have native plants. The possibilities, well, can't be numbered. This summer, I'm here to help you create some amazing videos. So here's my list. Jackie's eight essentials for creating a successful video. Wear extension 4-H branded apparel, volunteer badges, aprons as warranted. Or your own brand. Create a script with bulleted keywords. We'll place them on a whiteboard behind the camera so you won't appear to be reading. Provide horizontal photos you would like for emphasis. Share any cell phone footage you might have about your topic. Remember, videos are great to recognize students or volunteer efforts. If you're camera shy, that's okay. And that's we can pretty film much the all we need to see here. I just wanted you to see topic. how cutaways worked. And um, so let's see here. I want to get back to. So you'll see that was her assignment. She learned some of those skills that we're talking about today. How long should your video be? I will tell you that no matter how long you have it, the first 10 seconds are the make or break. This is where you want to have a hook. If, I'm, if they came to me and said, Michelle, please, I'd like to do a video on um, how to grow tomatoes in container plants. I don't want to waste the first 10 seconds saying, hi, I'm Michelle Walfer and I'm a Delaware Master Gardener and today we're going to be talking about how to go on and on and on. I want to come in with, do your tomatoes look like this? Do you have spots? Do you have wormholes? Do you, and have pictures. I'm going to show you how today, this video, I'm going to show you how to take care of that. And then say, hi, I'm Michelle Walfer and I'm a Delaware Master Gardener. I'm not, by the way, but that, that's the example. You really need to capture uh, interest right away. 
because people will um, pop, will will fall off. Um, on Facebook, there's no limits to how long a uh, video will be, but they, they will give you statistics. YouTube, the same thing. There's real no real limit. On Twitter, we're looking at two minutes and 20 seconds that you can upload. And on Instagram, it's one minute. Here's an example of a YouTube. This has received 5,000 views on how to prune blueberries. Now, we didn't plan this. I just followed Emily outside. She mentioned she was going to prune some blueberries. I went, oh, can I, can I follow you out? Um, but it, this will show you. This is on YouTube. It starts out at 100%, and then there's a precipitous, there's a drop. This actually isn't bad. 65% of those 5,000 views have hung in with us throughout. But as people start to watch, it starts to drop. This, minute, this video was almost six minutes long. So could this have been said in three minutes if we had planned it and scripted ahead of time? Probably so. As it is, this is a pre pretty decent retention. But 35% of the people didn't watch this until the end. You have to look at your statistics because this is going to tell you that you're doing something good or you're doing something wrong. Example, this was a, um, this is Facebook. Facebook will give you terrific um, um, metrics. This was a live video, completely unscripted. I saw a bunch of caterpillars on some milkweed, went out and did a live. So I only had one live viewer. People came in afterwards, and I had 147 unique viewers. But look at this. People who stayed around for 10 seconds, only 43. The average length of a three-minute, almost a four-minute video was 21 seconds. So after they saw the caterpillars on the milkweed, they left. So this tells me uh, I need to make my live, my live video shorter, get to the point, show the action. I didn't retain people the way I, the way I could have had this maybe been planned. So you really want to think about that. Um, and your stats are going to tell you the good, the bad, and the in-between. Music. Uh, I had uh, somebody tell me, well, I, I bought something on iTunes. Can I use it? Absolutely not. Just because you paid $1.29 for Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles doesn't mean you can upload it. I tried to do that with, I did a collage for, I do a collage for my grandson every year. He's three. I did a series of uh, clips and photographs. I put it to Here Comes the Sun. I wasn't even thinking. I uploaded it to Facebook, and Facebook went, eh, that's copyrighted material. I knew better. I didn't, wasn't even thinking. You cannot use, people do it on YouTube all the time, and they get taken down all the time. You must use royalty-free music, which means you do not have to pay, you might have to pay for the song, but you don't have to pay royalties. It can play over and over again, and you don't have to pay that artist any money. Then you have to, should somewhere at the very end of your video, credit the music. This, you know, such and such song by Chan Red, Redfield, who's somebody who does a lot of royalty free. Or you can search for public domain jingles. iMovie uh, on the desktop has a lot of nice tunes. Only seven of them are on the iMovie app. So you may want to look elsewhere for royalty-free or public domain music. Here's one um, source, but you can just Google that and you'll get a whole collection of them. They're often used to introduce with your bumper and then exit with your bumper. Recording your sound. Uh, the iMovie, the, I, the microphones in our smartphones are excellent. However, I go outside a lot. I'm filming master gardeners. I'm filming extension agents. I'm film, filming farmers. The worst enemy is wind. Um, if you're going to use your native built-in microphone, pick a quiet room. Turn off the notifications on your phone because you don't want to have anything pinging. You want to turn off your landline phones because you don't want that going on in the background. And you want to consider an auxiliary microphone. So these are two that I have, and I swear by them. The one here on the right the, in black is a lapel mic. So this long black bar simply clips on to the person you're interviewing. It's connected with via Bluetooth, but you must use this app. You cannot use the native video recording in your iPhone. This is $5.99. 
for me, it's well worth it for what I do. It gives you crisp, clear, professional sound. This Amperage microphone was $99, gives you five hours of recording. I keep it charged all the time, ready to go. And so when I don't have my expensive big camera with me, I pull out my iPhone, it takes 1080 HD video, and I want to have sound quality equal to, to the video quality. So this is what I will use. Um, if I'm just going out and I want to use my native and I don't have this equipment, for $59 you can buy this what's called the Rode microphone. And this big fuzzy ball at the end of the microphone is called a dead cat in the industry. I didn't make the name up. But what that does, you will often see microphones with black spongy foam on them. That's a wind shear or a wind screen, but it doesn't take away that sound that you get when you're out of recording in, in an open space. You need to have this dead cat on your phone. This has been a godsend to me. Um, it plugs right into the headphone jack. There's no extra batteries or wires, and it works with both Android and iPhone. Um, and you don't have to have any extra power. It just snaps into that headphone jack. If you have an iPhone 7, you're out of luck. You can't use this. But when I'm recording outside, this takes away that sound, that, that horrible sound from the wind that will ruin, really it ruins the video. So record, be aware of the wind shear. You often use sound with bumpers. You don't have to. So this is just be careful with the copyright. If you're using still images in the video that Jackie did, horizontal works best. They typically appear for about four seconds in a video. Um, landscape works best. You can use vertical, but you're going to have to give the vertical photographs about two seconds more so that the your app will have time to pan up and down. You will hear what's called the Ken Burns effect. If you've watched any Ken Burns uh, PBS documentaries such as the Civil War, he didn't have any video footage of the Civil War. He had to countless look at countless photographs. And to just see photograph after photograph looks like a slideshow, looks like an old-fashioned slideshow. It was boring. So what he did was he filmed the photograph and he moved his camera. So he panned in and out, up and down. And this is now known as the Ken Burns effect. And you saw that in Jackie's example. Um, if you need photographs, if you need a great picture of a hummingbird in a hummingbird feeder and you don't have one, you could go to a source like pixabay.com. These are public domain. I donate a lot of my photographs there. Some people do. So you don't have to source it. You don't have to mention where you got it from. And you don't want to have all those um, information popping up in your video. Pixabay is a great way if you just need a really good picture of a plate of spaghetti or a garden shot. That's a place to go. But you should probably use your original ones if you can. The other thing is you must. I keep a clipboard in my car of minor um, photo releases, model releases. Any children, I do not use any photos of children in a video that's going to go up on the internet without the parental permission. Now, a crowd of children attending a farm tour, that's a little different, but I am not going to do a close-up. You can get into a lot of trouble. So your parent will say to you, oh, sure, go ahead, take the picture. Then they come back later and say, I didn't, want, I didn't know you were going to put that on YouTube. I don't want my mom's going to sue you or you have to take it down. And, you're, and then you're in a lot of trouble. It's a he said, she said. So keep, you can download these off the Internet, but you want to have, this is the one the University of Delaware uses. You definitely want to have a photo release available in a pinch. And I've been in pinches where I didn't have this with me. I turn on my voice recorder. I ask the parent to give me their name, address, phone number email address, and then I say, may I use your child's photo in this, will it be okay? And then they say yes. I'll turn around, take the picture, and use it, but I will email them a, a, print, a printout so they can sign it and give that back to me. That's how important it is with minors. Now, adults, you've seen reporters go up to adults and they ask, may I use your, your picture? This is going to go into a video. Yeah, oh, sure. And they give you your name. And through that exchange, it's inherent that they've given you permission. But you, you can also download um, photo releases for them as well. 
This is creativecommons.org. This is another place where you can go to source photographs, and also you'll notice SoundCloud at the bottom left. So they have um, images, uh, sometimes video clips, sometimes music that you can use. It's called either it's in the public domain or it has an attribution license, which means that you can use it, you just have to give them credit for it somewhere. So that can appear as a watermark at the bottom or at the end with credits, but you, you say, I got this source from Michelle Walford, and that would be, then you can go ahead and use it freely. You want to make sure you unclick the commercial box, that's going to give you more. If you're going to use an image to promote your business, then you need to click that because there, there are people who say, you can use my photo, you can use my music, but you can't make money off of me. And so that is an important consideration when looking um, at creativecommons.org. I tend to use Google Images, and it will source from all these others. So if I use Google Images, I will get Pixabay images. But if you just want Pixabay, here's where you can go. These are all public domain, and you can use them without attribution. And you want to optimize for social media. If you are uh, uploading to YouTube, first of all, get a Gmail account. Because if you have a Gmail account, you have a free YouTube channel waiting for you to use. Make sure you tag it well. And make sure you have a really good, snappy title. Because this is how people, YouTube is the number two search engine. It's owned by Google. But uh, this is how people are going to find your video. If you, uh, on Facebook, so you've created a video and you've uploaded it to YouTube. Now you want to share it on Facebook. You could put the YouTube link on Facebook, but you will get more reach. You will get more organic reach or more exposure if you upload that same video a second time to YouTube, to Facebook, excuse me, to Facebook organically. Why is that? And so if I have a video of how to grow tomatoes, I put it on YouTube, maybe 35 people will see it. If I upload it through Facebook a second time, 100 people will see it. And it's because Facebook is going to favor its own platform. They want you to upload to their platform. So that's important to know. Twitter, if your video is longer than 2 minutes and 20 seconds, then you're going to have to share the YouTube link, and there will just be a link. If Again, if you upload it organically, if it's, two under, if it's 2 minutes and 20 seconds or under, you can upload it organically, and then Twitter provides a preview so people actually see a screenshot of it. So that will help. All right. So now these are some resources. These will be on the handouts that are available on the website. So what I wanted to do now is show you how it works in iMovie. So this is what Zoom is able, enables me to share um, my, my screen. So um, what I thought is um, I would have a fictitious assignment. So I was at the Women in Ag conference. Um, on February 9th, and I took some video, and I took some photographs, and so now they're asking me to create a commercial to use it for next year. So I said, sure. So this is what I would do, and before I switch over, the main thing you want to do is create an album in your gallery or your camera wall, and put all of your photos, if you'll notice, I have, I have some photos, uh, videos here, 22 seconds, 52 seconds, one vertical one, um, that I have a lot of photographs. And I have the video bumpers. So I've downloaded them onto my phone or my iPad, in this case. I've created an album called Women and Ag. So I can go through now and find these very quickly. I don't have to search through my cat videos and pictures of my grandson. I can go right to where I need to go. So at this point, I am going to, um, let's see here, I have to stop the share a second. So bear with me. And I'm going to come on again and share my screen. I'm going to share my iPad. And iPad and iPhone, it works identically. And just bear with me one second. I'm not able to connect. Oh, that's wonderful. We just I just tested it. Let me make sure we're uh, stop share. Okay. I'm going to 
to lock my, maybe I have to unlock it. This won't be good if I can't share it. So let's see here, share screen. I'll share my iPad. There we go. You've got a lot of technology. That's going to make a connection. It's thinking about it. Okay, so now you're seeing my iPad. Let me check my time here, okay? So first thing I want to do is I want to go to my iMovie app. I happen to know it's right here, so I'm going to click on that. And you're going to get this plus sign. So you're going to click on the plus sign. You can see I've been experimenting. I want to make sure it worked. But I'm going to tap on the plus sign. It's going to ask me if I want to do a movie or a trailer. I'm going to do a movie. The trailers are fun. So that's a really cool way of practicing how to use iMovie. But I'm going to tap on iMovie. And I get this screen. And it's going to ask me, OK, on the Left-hand side is media, and I want to go straight to my albums. I'm not going to, I don't want to, you see I have, all, I have all these albums. And there, at second from the bottom, is women and ag. So these are all the media that I took. So you'll see the bumpers that I created. You'll see some video, and you'll see photographs. So I'm going to now go to the very bottom where it says create movie, and I'm going to hit tap on that. And now you get this panel. What you're seeing at the top left is a, is a, a large rectangle. It may not be showing up really well here, but this is going to be your preview section. On the right of that, you're going to have your source material, your media, your audio, your music, etc. And then the bottom third is going to be your editing pane. So I'm going to tap on albums again. It's going to ask me twice. I'm not really sure why, but I'm going to go ahead and click on Women in Ag a second time. And now this is where I'm going to be sourcing my material for this video. And the video wants to be, and I see I'm going to set the video for maybe one minute. I'm going to shoot for about one, one and a half minutes. So what I could do, the first thing I want to do is I want to put in my bumper. So all I just really do is tap on the on the image and it comes up and you'll notice it defaults to 6.8 seconds I don't know that I want it that long but right now I'm just going to leave that alone because in the interest of time it's very it, very easy to do you just tap on the on the in the editing pane you'll see it it comes it becomes highlighted and you have two yellow handles and this if you've ever used Instagram or Vine it works the same way it's just a little slider and so you can slide. And again, the average is about four seconds. You can go four, two, four, three. They tend to let the first image be a little bit longer. You'll also know, you'll see here up at the top, it's uh, over the, in the preview section, it says pinch to position the N and Ken Burns enable. Uh, Ken Burns, again, is this panning and zooming effect. I don't really want that for this because it's cutting off the Women in Ag logo at the bottom. So I'm going to just disable the Ken Burns. So I've just tapped on that. And so there won't be any movement with this. But I do want to size it a little bit. So I'm just pinching to size it. So there is my bumper. And you can put this in at the end or you can put it at the beginning. Um, that's how I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to go ahead and it's going, it'll, it will start to play. And I'm just going to move it on ahead. I want to add some more videos. Now, I could just go in if I have a mixture of stills. If you have all stills, you're going to have a pretty dry video. But you could do that. And you'll notice that they all come in. This one comes in at 4.3 seconds. This one is 4.3. And this one's, for some reason, 5.3 is sort of a random thing. So if you play this now, this is what you would get. And it chooses for you a random Ken Burns effect. But that might not be what you like. For instance, that vendor right there, we didn't get to see the name of our business. So I can click on this. 
and I can decide to, I want to open up with it more wide. So I'm, I've selected the pinch to position to start, and then I pinch the video where I want to start. So now I see Crow Vineyard and Winery. I see her banner. So that's where I want it to start. Then I'll click on the second arrow, and it'll say pinch the position to end. Well, I'm going to end it with her nice smiling face holding that wine. And then that's all I have to do. I just move on to the next one. So now I can slide back. This white bar, by the way, right here is called the playhead. So I'm going to just, with my finger at the very bottom in the black space, I'm dragging this over. And let's see how now how that plays. And you'll notice while I'm stopping here, you see a little bit of Cara Sylvester. She's blending out as this shot of the crow is coming in. That's a transition. That's the little box with the two with the X, two triangles that look like an X. That's a transition. That's something that should be familiar to you if you've used PowerPoint. And iMovie will default to that, but you can tap on that and you can get rid of it. You can make it longer. You can do a wipe. I personally like the dissolve. It works well. Um, so I'm going to leave that alone. I just want to show you how the image of the vendor looks now that I've changed the Ken Burns effect. And so this one's coming in and this one's moving down a little bit. Now if I didn't want for there to be any Ken Burns effect, so in this case here, um, I don't want that. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to pinch it to where I want it and it will play without any movement at all. So you can mix it up a little bit. If you have B-roll, and I do, you can go ahead and put that in. So I have video of a breakout session. So I'm going to tap on that. And this plus sign comes up and an arrow. If you click on the arrow, it will preview. If you don't remember what that was about, you could go in there. I'm just going to go ahead. It's a minute and 17 seconds long. Well, that's going to take up most of my one minute and 30 seconds. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I want this B-roll. And, and normally what I like to do is I like to do two pictures and then, then put it a, a B-roll in. I'm going to put it, though, at the end in the wrong place and show you how you can move it. So now this comes in. It's made my video very long, and look at all of this. Oh my goodness, I don't want all of this. So I look for a section that I think would be nice. All I'm, all I'm doing is sliding this now, and I want about six or seven seconds, maybe 10 seconds of, of this. And so the very beginning, I don't want to use this because it doesn't show the speaker. So I kind of like, da, 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 and I'm just going back and forth. I'll start right here. So I put the playhead right about there. I'm going to tap on the image, uh, on the footage. You'll notice it's highlighted with the yellow handle. And then down at the bottom, it says split. And what you could do is split that section and just cuts it. Now, if you left that alone, you would never notice it. So there, you don't, you don't, you can't see it. So, but I want to split that. I want it to start here, and I want it to end oh, about there. So I'll tap on it and split it again. And so the rest of this, the very beginning, I don't want. So I'm going to tap on it and hit delete. And that other rest of that, it's all pretty much rep repetition. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to delete that. So now I have five seconds of, in this case, Dot Abbott presenting a breakout session. So I can now rearrange this. If I have a narrator and they mention breakouts early, I might want to put it up here. I might want to put this over here. So it's very easy to rearrange them, which is really nice. One other thing. There's something else about this video clip. I can hear her talking. Now, maybe I want that in the video, and maybe I don't. I actually have an interview here with Tracy Wooten, and I 
she's going to be my narrator. So I don't want the sound in here because she's going to be talking or I'm planning to voice over this and talk about the breakout sessions. I don't want to hear what actually happened. So you tap on the video and you will see at the bottom it says detach audio. And you tap that. It separates the audio from, from the video. It will still play at this point. The end user would not detect any difference, but I'm going to go ahead now and delete that so that it's quiet. Now, I have, um, so this is what you would do. Let me see. I think I have, here is a, here is a portrait picture. So this was done in portrait orientation, and it's got balloons, and it has wine up at the top. Now, watch what happens with a portrait. iMovie is going to make it horizontal. So you, I've lost the very top half of that. So with a portrait video uh, photograph, you need to make it a little longer if you want the whole, if you want all the content of that photograph to be seen. So I'm going to go on here and I'm just going to drag it and make it a little longer, make it about six seconds. Now I'm going to use the Ken Burns effect. So I'm going to click onto the top and say pinch the position to start. And look at this. Oh, they were giving away wine. That's fabulous. I want that in my video because that's going to make more people come next year. So I put that in here. Then I want to maybe end with the balloon. So I pinch the position, and it, it picked it up right there. That's fine. And that's all I need to do. I just move on to the next one. Now I'm going to just kind of drag back and watch how that plays out. So you see the wine but you see the pretty decorations and the festivity of the event. So when you do a portrait photograph in your movie, give it a couple extra seconds so that you can get that content in. Um, I also had this other breakout session. So let me show you another thing. So at this point, I could narrate this, and I'm going to look at this and I have a little button over here on the side uh, with a microphone on the left-hand side in the middle. Next to the camera icon, there's a little microphone. And I could, now I'm, I'm not a voiceover, obviously, not a voice actor, but I'll give you an idea. It, it will, the recording will start wherever the playhead begins. So I, I'm thinking I might have music. So I'm going to go ahead and record. So give me a countdown. The 2017 Mid-Atlantic Women in Ag Conference was a great success. In addition to beautiful door prizes, such as wonderful wine from local wineries, we had fantastic exhibitors and ability to network. We had terrific breakout sessions on financial management, and we had the most wonderful display of door prizes. All right, I'm going to stop it. I can preview it. I can go, oh, my God, that was horrible. Probably was horrible. I can accept it. And now you will hear. The 2017 Mid-Atlantic Women in Ag Conference was a great success. In addition to beautiful door prizes. All right, so you get so the idea there. Um, I didn't plan that. I didn't have a script. If I read a script, I could have done it better. So you want to have that done ahead of time. So you can arrange your photographs to match your script have somebody come in and voice over it. But what if I interviewed someone? I happened to, just to show as an example, I interviewed Tracy Whitten, who was on the planning committee, and I interviewed her for one minute and 34 seconds, and I want to use her, her narration as, as the narrator for this event. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And now you will see Tracy does one minute and 34 seconds of talking about how great the Women in Ag Conference is. Hi, my name is Tracy Wooden. I'm the horticultural agent here at the University of Delaware in Sussex County. I had the real pleasure of being on the planning committee of the... All right, so she's talking about that. So normally, here's what I will do. If you are interviewing someone like this and plan on dropping in video behind them or, or still photos, what you want to do is... She didn't want to be on camera the whole time. She knows I'm going to do this. So I'm going to wait until she introduces herself, and then I'm going to stop it. 
Hi, my name is Tracy Wooden. I'm the horticultural agent here at the University of Delaware in Sussex County. I have the real part. You can see uh, right there where the little wiggles on the sound, that's kind of where she paused. So I'm going to split that. Okay. And at the very end, when she says, I hope you'll join us next year in 2018, it's all, all at the bottom. So I'm going to play that. And Native Bees, as well as financial management. So hope you'll join us again. Oh, it's right about there. So, oops. Let me go back to that. I just want to show you how this works. As well as financial management. So hope you'll. All right. So hope you'll. Right there, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to split that again. Because what I want to do is I want to begin with Tracy and I want to end with Tracy, but I want to put stuff in between. So I'm going to, I'm going to split this. And I want to leave that audio intact with that, with her closing. And I want to leave the audio intact with her opening. But now, I don't want this part. I want her sound, but I don't want her. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to highlight with the yellow handles. I'm going to detach the audio. Now, if I just deleted, I could click on this and delete it. It's going to delete the audio with it. So just going to leave that here. And what I'm going to do is listen to her. I had the real pleasure of being on the planning committee of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Women in Agriculture Conference each year. And this will be in 2018, our 17th year. And All right, so she's, she's talking away. I'm going to go in here and put some pictures of the planning committee in since she is talking about them. So we've got Shannon and Jennifer. We have another group picture here of Victoria and Shannon and so people who were maybe in the planning committee, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and just tap some pictures in here for the sake of time. I'm going to put in um, and then what I'm going to do is take her video her audio rather, and highlight it. So you see it's highlighted in yellow. And I am going to drag it over. Whoops. And it's right to where her audio ended. So now it will look like this. Delaware and Sussex. I had the real pleasure of being on the planning committee of the Mid Atlantic Regional Women in Agriculture Conference each year. And this will be in 2018, our 17th year. And we hope you'll consider joining us. We have, it's a great opportunity to network with other producers. All right, so she talks about networking here. So there's a great photograph here of women talking to each other at a table. So they're networking. So I can kind of put that in there. And I would play around with this just a little bit so that you won't hear that break. As you're a big agent here at the University of Delaware in Sussex. I have the real pleasure. So that overlapped a little bit. So I'd have to just drag it back. You have to, oops, you have to play with it a little bit. And it just did something different. Okay. Oh, it's a little being touchy. But I hope you get the idea of that. So that's one option. Let's just take that away for the time being, and I want to show you how to add music. So we're going to take Tracy out for right now. Bye, Tracy. Okay, so you've you got your combination of video, and, and we're going to get rid of that too. Okay, and we have some B-roll here, and um, I could also leave the audio in and just turn the volume on that way down to nothing. So without detaching it, I've turned that off. So now I want to add some soundtrack to this. So I'm going to go over to the top right and where it says media, click audio. And this is where the, the separation of the two works. 
um, iMovie would give you quite a few options. You're only going to have seven here. You have theme music, and so you can let's take a listen to them. I don't want to use that. I just wanted to listen. Okay, so bright is modern, pretty innocuous. or jingles are about a minute long. Um, you could also go into your um, albums. If you've downloaded some royalties, you're going to see my Beatles songs and all that kind of stuff here. I want to go into artists. And there is an artist called Chad Chan Redfield. He is a royalty-free. So I've, I've paid for these so I can use them. And so you'll, this is a song here. So I could use that if I wanted to. I'm going to go back and actually use the theme music that comes with the um, iTunes, iMovie rather, and I'm going to click on Modern, and I'm going to bring that in, I'm going to use it. And it comes in, and your audio track for soundtracks is always green, and I want to... Um, use it just for the bumpers because I plan on narrating. So what you can do with the music is it's a minute, it's just about a minute long. It can, it can be the whole duration. You can lower the intensity of it so the whole thing will play. Uh, if you aren't having narration, a little music will make it much more powerful. You also want to make sure when it ends, you don't want a hard ending like this. And it just stops. That, that's a dead giveaway. It's not very professional. In this case, I would want to have um, a closing bumper. So I'm going to go back to my media. And I have a bumper for the end. And that this bumper will say, for more information, please visit our website. And usually that's a little bit longer than the normal. So I want this to run for maybe seven seconds. Gives enough time for people to write down a phone number. And with the, you highlight the audio track and click volume. So here's the audio track. I'm going to click volume. And you will see it's highlighted with the yellow handles. And you will see a button called Fade. And you want to tap on that. And a little yellow arrow will come up. And that kind of gives you a trail off. So I don't know if you can see it real well, but I'm just dragging it over. And that gives it that gradual fade off. So let's listen to it. A little bit more of a finished, finished look. And you can do that at the beginning as well. I can tap on this. I want to ease into this song, this music a little bit. So I'm going to click on fade and I'm going to just drag it over a little bit so it builds from when it opens. And then it gets louder. I can split the clip at this point if there's narration. Um, I could split this clip. While I'm narrating, I would narrate. I would come in at the end, split it, and then this section where I'm narrating, I would just lower the volume a little bit. And actually, iMovie will do that for you. If I were to add an audio track now and narrate this, it would lower the background music. But you can have both, and that works out really well. Um, we're about ready to close up here. So I am, I hope I showed you enough to get you started. Thank you for watching our archived presentation of our Wednesday webinar. 
If you would like to see more archived Wednesday webinars, please visit our YouTube channel. Or to find a schedule of upcoming live webinars, visit our website.